The year was 2002. I was 14 years old, walking into Corning Painted Post West High School, a school that no longer exists. I was wearing Chuck Taylors on my feet because I wanted the other kids to think I was cool and I wanted them to like me. But I was also wearing a nice collared shirt because I wanted my mom to like me too. In short, I had no idea who I was or what I was doing. Fast forward to 2020 and Lexus appears to be in the same spot I was 18 years ago. This is the 2020 Lexus ES. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's peaceful, it's tranquility on four wheels. But to be specific, it's the ES350 F Sport, which means it's also loud, aggressive, and with red leather interior and two sport modes. Lexus discontinued the rear wheel drive GS for 2021, leaving this car to compete against the likes of the BMW 5 Series and Mercedes-Benz E-Class. Those are titans of the midsize executive class, and this is based on a Camry. Let's go for a drive and figure out what this car really wants to be. First, if you enjoy car reviews, be sure to subscribe to the Car Guru's YouTube channel. We have a lot of 2021 models headed our way this fall, and you don't want to miss them. Now out there, the Lexus ES looks like a sports sedan but in here it is clear where this car excels. The materials are excellent. The seats, absurd as they are in this red faux leather upholstery, are supremely comfortable. Sitting in the driver's seat feels like resting in your favorite chair. The power adjustments let you find the perfect range of cushion and support. Your arms will rest at the ideal angle and quality materials have been added everywhere your hands are likely to go. If there's one complaint about the ES350's ergonomics, it's a small one. There's these cup holders. This one's a bit too far, and this one far too close. Hit the ignition, and hear the engine come to life. Sound familiar? Well, it should. It's the same 3.5 liter V6 engine that Toyota offers on the Camry. And in fact, this car, which is built on the Toyota New Global Architecture K platform, is based on the same underpinnings as the current generation Camry and Avalon. And while the new Camry is still trying to shake off some of that automobile as appliance reputation, it's a really, really good car, and the V6 gives it plenty of hustle. You've got 302 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque sent to the front wheels. After the GS leaves for good this year, Lexus will offer a 2021 ES with all-wheel drive, but for 2020, it is front wheel only. All gas-powered ES models get an 8-speed automatic transmission. The hybrid model gets a CVT. But on the ES F Sport, you can also swap in an adaptive variable suspension that partners with the various drive modes to alter the vehicle's driving dynamics. Eco mode, as you would expect, prioritizes fuel efficiency, but sport mode tweaks the throttle control and shift mapping. Turn the dial one notch further to unlock Sport Plus mode. And that builds on sport mode's credentials by leveraging that adaptive suspension to turn up the steering and handling. But at the end of the day, the ES remains a heavy front wheel drive sedan. You likely won't notice it driving around town in part because the steering in this car feels artificially light. But if you were to take an ES350 F Sport to a track, not saying that many buyers will, you'd likely recognize the compromises inherent to a front wheel drive design pretty quickly, particularly against rear wheel drive competitors. If you want smooth, effortless driving and a quiet cabin, the ES works. Fuel economy is fine, I guess. Standard models get 22 miles per gallon in the city, 32 on the highway and 26 combined, while the F Sport trim gets 22 in the city, 31 on the highway and 25 combined. But really, there just aren't that many direct competitors to this car. The BMW 530i gets better fuel economy, but it has less power. The 540i does worse, but it has more power. The closest rival might be the Acura RLX, which also uses a naturally aspirated V6, and that does a fair bit worse. It's also being discontinued this year, so, I mean, who, who cares about the Acura RLX? Without a doubt, without a doubt, 
The most polarizing part of this car is the infotainment controller. Lexus, like Mazda, has done away with the touchscreen. But unlike Mazda, which uses a simple rotary controller, Lexus is banking on a laptop-style touchpad called the Remote Touch Interface. To put it lightly, this takes a little getting used to, particularly when you're going 65 miles per hour. The touchpad has been updated to provide more usable surface area, and it vibrates when you tap a button on the screen with it. That certainly does make it easier to use, but it still requires a lot of your attention, and that means a lot of time when your eyes aren't on the road. Sorry, Lexus, a rotary dial would have been safer. Now, maybe you guys disagree with me. If you do, let me know in the comments. Luckily, the rest of the infotainment software is excellent. Get the navigation package, and Lexus upgrades the ES from an 8-inch screen to this beautiful 12.3-inch unit. I love how it looks. And with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto offered as standard equipment, you have an easy to use backup alternative in case you don't love the Lexus system, which to be fair, I think is really easy to understand. This is difficult to use, but the system is very easy to understand. Ahead of the steering wheel, you'll see a fully digital driver information display. Press this button and the tachometer slides right to showcase some extra information, including a G-force meter in a Lexus ES. Slick. On the safety front, you can expect adaptive cruise control, lane departure assist, automatic emergency braking, pretty much the works. It all comes as a part of Lexus Safety System Plus 2.0, which is standard on every ES. Safety is an easy win for Lexus, but it is great to see the brand driving this technology forward as equipment that everybody deserves to have. Blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert and parking assist is an option, but curiously, that option is required on the F Sport trim, and that juices the price a little. I used adaptive cruise control and the new lane tracing assist technology extensively, and I found that the former worked beautifully. Lane tracing assist is designed to follow curving road markers and keep your car centered in the lane, and it worked fairly well, but occasionally it did have me bouncing between those markers a bit like a ping pong ball. The ES is certainly a good looking car, assuming you're okay with the grill. The big spindle design gets a black mesh pattern on the F Sport trim, and the headlights look plenty mean. Past the front view though, the ES manages to keep things simple and tasteful. It's not quite Audi levels of timeless, but it manages to look less busy than a BMW or Mercedes. At the back, the taillights showcase an L shape. You know, for Lexus. The back seat offers plenty of room, including three more inches of legroom than you'll find in a Mercedes E-Class. The trunk is bigger too. At 16.7 cubic feet, it's more than big enough for a weekend away. And for comparison, you only get 14 cubic feet out of a BMW 5 Series, 13.1 from an E-Class. We've known for a while that the Lexus ES offers a smooth ride, a quiet interior, and top shelf materials. It may be based on a Camry, but this is a true luxury car. And to add a cherry on top, it's a relative bargain. Yeah, the BMW 5 Series and the Mercedes E-Class, they may offer more sport touring heritage. They also cost significantly more. The ES starts at $39,900. Our test car rang up at $53,820, including destination, a navigation package that also includes the sublime Mark Levinson stereo, and some other options. When automakers loan us a car to test drive, it's usually an expensive trim that has been loaded with options, and this is no exception. But still, this car, this one right here, it's cheaper than the base price of a BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes E-Class. So with that in mind, the ES is kind of a spectacular value, and with mid-size luxury sedans seemingly an endangered species, this might be the best deal on the market. Just keep in mind that even though there's an F Sport badge on the fender, this car won't compete against an M Sport BMW or a Mercedes AMG. It's a quiet, reserved honor student that bought a pair of chucks for its first day of high school. 
the Lexus ES350 F Sport may be a little confused, but at its core, it remains one of the industry's most comfortable sedans. Thanks for watching. For more videos, be sure to subscribe to the CarGurus YouTube channel. We look forward to hearing from you in the comments, and we'll see you next time.